When I was first learning 3D, I looked a lot into how to make 3D characters and was always off put by the long process of either modeling or rigging them from scratch. So today's guide is my personal way of doing things without modeling. We're going to talk about character models themselves, useful plugins, animation, textures, and even some more advanced tips and tricks. So let's hop in and get started. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. I don't know about you, but for me, doing the same thing over and over can lead to burnout pretty quick. One of the best ways for me to stay engaged and earn new opportunities is simply by learning something new. I've been a longtime fan of Skillshare because it allows me to gain firsthand knowledge from industry professionals in a wide range of different practices. Personally, I've been using Skillshare to consume a ton of different 3D tutorials so that I can learn everything from modeling basics to animating from scratch. I love using Skillshare for this because everything is neatly tailored to my liking. There's well-produced content across so many different topics, whether you want to learn video editing, personal development tips, or even like me, those niche 3D workflows like this awesome astronaut animation by Visual Dawn. If you're like me and you get a bit overwhelmed trying to pick up a new skill, there's also curated learning path videos, which which can set you well on your way to achieving whatever you want to achieve. If you guys want to check out Skillshare, the first 500 people to use my link at the top of the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. When it comes to making a character without modeling, there's an absolute must have software and that is Daz. I've talked about Daz a lot on this channel. It's free. There's a huge marketplace of assets. And most importantly, there are a plethora of options for working between Blender, C4D, Unreal Engine, or whatever other software using their bridge plugins. Daz characters work by having a set or generation of base character models. For example, the newest set of characters, Genesis 9, have the most realistic textures and features already set up for you. Keep in mind here, nine times out of 10, I'm only using the free base character model that comes in included with Daz. If you want, you can use the marketplace. It's all up to you. For the most part, to get started in Daz, you just go to figures and select one of the base characters. If you want more control over the look of the character and you don't want to be limited to just preset looking models, you have a few options. Daz has a few useful plugins for rigging, morphing, or customizing. I personally like to use this FaceGen software, which is a third-party software. It's around $100, but it allows you to import any image of somebody, click these anchor points around their face, and then transfer the shape of their face and the facial textures to Daz with a simple little slider. This means you can quickly make anyone you want into a 3D character, which is extremely useful, especially if you're somebody using Daz for client work and you want to bring someone specific to life in 3D. So now let's talk about getting your character into your 3D program of choice. To do that, I use the Daz to Blender Bridge. It's a free plugin. It's pretty easy to set up. Once you have set it up, you click the Daz Bridge and you click Import. If we take a look at the shader editor here, you can see the plugin automatically converts the Daz eye ray textures for use in Blender, which is very nice. So speaking of texturing, it's very good to know how to control the textures manually using something like Photoshop. Say, for example, I want to fix an error with a face texture or add a mark or a tattoo or whatever. I can go into the shader editor, find the path to the face texture image and then open up that image in Photoshop. Now that you have the image in Photoshop, first off, go ahead and lock your door so no one walks in and thinks you're Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. You can make any adjustments or touch up the textures using your photo editing software. Once you've made that change, go ahead and save that image, go back into Blender, and then load that new image into the image texture node in Blender. This way, the texture will automatically update. It's very easy, and it's a good thing to know for this process as a whole. So now for the animation, you have a few options here. You can import your character in with a pose or animation from Daz itself. You can use the already made rig and animate or pose within Blender, or you can use some cheat codes. I mainly either use Mixmo or the Rococo Studio Live plugin. With Mixmo, I just need to export my model as an FBX. Go to Mixmo.com, import the FBX, and then choose from any of these free animations. The other method is the Rococo Studio plugin, which again is free. The plugin has a useful retargeting tool. So if you have any motion capture files, you can retarget them onto your existing rig. You can get motion capture files by either downloading on the internet for free or by buying them. Alternatively, you can buy a motion capture suit, which can be expensive, but it gives you a ton of control. I have a section in my Director 3D plugin. It's a Blender plugin for music video directors with a bunch of mocap dances ready for retargeting as well. I have full tutorials showing you how to do that, and I plan to add to this library a lot in the future. So hopefully I can give you guys some more options as well as free options a little bit down the road. 
So that covers all of the basics. I now want to mention some optional things that you can throw into this workflow, which really add a lot to this and can make your results look a lot better. The first is to use Marvelous Designer to design custom clothing and create clothing simulations for your characters. Doing this not only adds a ton of realism to your character, but it's also a very fun process. If you are adding your clothing only with Daz or Blender, you're just adding a static mesh of clothes. So if you animate your character to move, the clothing is not going to realistically move with the character. With Marvelous Designer though, you can get full simulations for the clothing, which will make your character animations look infinitely better. If you want an easy guide on Marvelous Designer, I made a full beginner step-by-step -step guide on using Blender and Marvelous Designer together. The next optional step, which can go a long way, is to use Substance Painter. You can include this in your workflow to make things look a lot better as a whole. The only tricky part about setting this up is understanding the UDIM tile workflow for texturing, which really isn't that hard. It's extremely easy to use the UDIM setup with Marvelous Designer and Substance because as you make the clothing in Marvelous, you're technically also making the UVs. So you can export your clothing over to Substance, give it a lot of flavor and small details, and then port that back over to Blender. I personally use this video here for my Substance to Blender export settings. You just have to watch that once, copy the settings he's doing, and then save that as a preset, and you're good to go. Substance Painter for skin textures is also very nice. I'm going to leave another little cheat code tutorial down below that shows how to download these free 8K face textures and then use Blender or Substance Painter to fit the 8K detail maps onto your character. This gives them some ultra realistic detail. And again, you can download those 8K maps for free. So definitely check that out if you're going for realism. So that's about it for this workflow guide. Again, there's just too much information to truly dive into a step-by-step -step for everything without making a full course. So if you do want me to make that, let me know down in the comments. Regardless, this video should still give you a great place to start when it comes to finding what personally works for you. Other than that, guys, we have another video planned to go live tomorrow showing you an easy guide using Blender and After Effects to make this really cool visualizer. So stay tuned for that one. And if you didn't see my last video, I gave you a bunch of useful tips and tricks for making music videos with Blender. So if you are planning on using this video to get started making animations, I highly recommend you check out that video next. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.